Okay, so let's go ahead and get started then. So we have recurring this call with the uh, the main the uh, the main network service mesh meeting. We have the NSM documents call, which occurs weekly every Wednesday at the same time as this meeting, and we also have the NSM use case call, which occurs every second, fourth, and fifth. Um, at the, all, every Monday, or sorry, every second, fourth, and fifth Monday at this time as well. There is also a new CNCF telecom user group, uh, which I'm, I'm calling the TUG, which uh, is every first and third Monday. So they alternate between NSM use cases and, and the CNCF telecom user group. Uh, we had our first kickoff in KubeCon uh this uh this last week and there will be a second meeting in shanghai um, we there there is also a cncf networking working group as well which occurs every two weeks on tuesday at 9 a.m uh, so i'm not sure if this is if that's going to if that's this week or if it's uh next week so uh if, if someone could uh could work that out that'd be that'd be good um, so events, KubeCon EU is now a wrap, and we had several we had several talks on introduction and deep dive. We ended up with uh, a few talks on uh, in the deep in the FIDO, and we also had a and the LFN uh, cloud native networking groups that uh, that went on as well. That's that discuss the integration between NSM and FIDO and uh, future things that, that I expect to to see. And we also uh, ended up discussing about the X Factor CNF and uh, the telecom user group ended up talking quite a bit about the potential certification process of like what does it mean to be a CNF. So that is a that is a big discussion that we're going to end up having with the industry um, over at the very minimum the next few months if not longer so it's definitely good to make sure that people here participate with uh with those discussions and those discussions is my guess will probably end up happening within the cncf telecom user group uh and likely a few other venues as well uh, we will post those as they as they come up um, is there anything that uh anyone wants to discuss with at the uh, kubecon I think we've got some stuff done under KubeCon retrospective when we get there. Okay, we will leave that for the retrospective then. Um, so a, a couple things coming up as well that are, that are not on the uh, current agenda. Uh, there is a LFN event that is that I was made aware of that at the very minimum Taylor will be there, uh, which is. It, which is, I think it was an LFN DDF. So uh, if there's anyone who wants to, so th this will be held up in, uh, see, I should, need to, I should have gotten the details on this. Um, in Stockholm. In Stockholm, that's right. So if there's anyone who wants to uh, effectively represent the uh, NSM in this particular event and, uh, and talk with people and build up some awareness, that'd be, That'd be fantastic. Um, I am meeting with with uh, we we do have some people in some of the LFN community. So we have like people like Prem who do work with ODL, uh, and we're also having conversations with a couple of people from Tungsten Fabric to work out how to bring some of their network services into uh, into NSM. Um, I will discuss more with that as uh, as I learn. Um, and once once I learn the details and we, we were if we can work out if there's good alignment there or not, um, we have KubeCon China coming up, which is going to be in Shanghai, and uh, we Nikolai and I have an intro maintainer track coming up there. Um, uh, and there's also going to be um, second issue of the. Uh, telecom user group uh, kickoff. I, I don't know if, yeah, so probably it's worth mentioning. And I hope to be able to join this time. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, Nikolai had the uh, unfortunate time schedule of uh, being at the booth during the telco user group uh, kickoff, yeah. but um, he, he was there in spirit. Mm -hmm. um, we so we have uh, so we have as well uh, before that. Uh, there's also an event. We'll go ahead and uh, and I'll, I'll get the details for it pretty soon. Uh, there is a user space meeting in uh, Bordeaux, France, for a DBDK user space. Uh, uh, so I guess that's like a mini conference. And this, so if it, it's it's the Thursday and Friday before ONS Europe, which I believe occurs on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. The call for papers on that is on May 31st. So if anyone wants to talk about DBDK and NSM there, that would be a good venue to put in a talk. Um, but the deadline is literally in a couple of days. So today's the 28th. So the deadline is uh, probably depending on time zone, Wednesday or Thursday. Um, we have ONS Europe coming up in Antwerp. Uh, call for papers ends in June 16th. We have MEF 2019, and which is coming up in Los Angeles in November 18th or 22nd. And we have KubeCon uh, and CloudNativeCon North America in San Diego, which the call for papers is currently open and closes July 12th. So if anyone would like to give a presentation on NSM, I'm, I'm certain that we'll run some of the intro, uh, we'll add some of the intro and deep dive talks to it as well, but there's, um, there's always room for, uh, for additional topics as well. And uh, are you talking about the KubeCon now? That was the KubeCon yeah, North America. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. So now let's, let's jump into KubeCon EU, so. Yeah, uh, no, 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 I, I just wanted to make a small remark about the KubeCon uh, North America. I mean, we still have time uh, for planning, et cetera, et cetera, but um, my impression from the last, uh, from, <laughs> from Cube, KubeCon EU was that these two, two sessions of 35 minutes are not enough. I mean, uh, once people, I mean, you open the, the, the for, for questions, people start asking a lot and it's good to have the discussion. So my suggestion would be if we have to choose again between an 85 minute slot, if I'm not wrong, and two 35 minute slots, I would really vote for a, a single um, 85 minute slot so that we have more time to, I mean, we had enough of intros and deep dives and let's just, just have something that, that's more open for questions and discussions that, I mean, that, that, that's a good observation. Um, I mean, we, we also had the problem in, in KubeCon EU that, that, from what I understand, at both of our talks, there were people being turned away at the door because the room was completely full. So. Yeah, and for context, each room held two, uh, 200 people, um, according to the organizer. So. Each room had 200 people. We had about 10 or 15 standings. So, yeah, we were, we were running very, very good capacities. Yeah, um, yeah, and I think that's a good observation. The, the one thing that I, with the 85 minute one, is I think there'll be a, a bit more preparation up front because uh, more likely we, they may ask for some type of a hands on thing. Uh, so we should make sure that we get the details on that. Uh, but I, I, actually, I strongly agree with you as well. Like 35 minutes is like crunch time, and uh, we end up with the one of the other things that makes it problematic is there were a lot of people in the deep dive that had not attended the intro. Yeah. And so they're asking questions that were covered in the intro. Uh, and so we ended up having to rehash some of the information. So a 85 minute session would fix that problem. I think we have segued straight into the cube cutting your retrospective. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, so I mean, it, it went really well. We did get mentioned in a keynote, um, which is always good, and we got a lot of time mentioned. Time. I mean, they, my impression was that the keynote was all about us, more or less. So mentioned is too weak of an expression. My impression. Pretty, pretty much, yeah. There was a, <laughs> we were basically the, the main topic of the keynote, um, and so that was really good. Um, 
the, the videos and slides are already up on the event page. Um, I have been tracking Google Analytics against the network service mesh.io page. So we had 817 users in the last week come through, which is a big jump for us. Um, and then we also had, um, you know, I've also been, I was also using QR codes in order to track, um, I had different campaigns attached to QR codes. So we know like how many people scan the keynote QR code or how many people scan the network service mesh intro QR code or even how many scans we got from the QR code stickers. So. Um. Am I muted? Yeah. Uh, so one thing that I wanted, uh, I, I have put here the link uh, to the uh, telco user, telecom user group kickoff presentation. Uh, and the video uh, is on YouTube already. Uh, I have posted it into the TUG channel on CNCF. Um, just for reference, if anyone is interested. But um, I actually i liked a lot this slide i'm still about to watch the video and to see what actually was discussed here uh, <clears throat> i think uh, my ob observation from 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 this uh, slide here and uh, my conclusion for this is okay we're part of this white landscape i mean there are a lot of things there so what i would really and uh, i have some something in, in the end of the work group call if we manage to get to it like the roadmaps thing that i'm trying to bring for a couple of calls um, my my main observation here would be we're part of a white landscape. We should try to start interoperate with some of these guys around us to to just have our roots there, you know, uh, connections, strong connections, not uh, be just we are another bullet in the list. I mean, we should be part of that landscape, strongly connected to the other guys. <laughs> Yep. Uh, just something about the, the deep dive you uh, you talked about uh, the composite and how to write an endpoint, uh, Nikolai. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And during this uh, demo or this uh, uh, this intro to the SDK, uh, you are showing that you are using a, a VPP agent based composite. Okay. Uh, that was uh, that was the example. Yes, yes. Yes, but it was really confusing for a lot of um, uh, colleagues. Uh, Ask me if uh, then uh, uh, an endpoint has to be VVP based uh, to be an endpoint. You see. So it doesn't necessarily. What you have to realize is it does have to be cloud native if you run it in a pod, which means it has to be a user space data plane. It could just. But and if you look at the space of things that actually work as user space data planes. It's basically VPP or write something DPDK based from scratch. Does that make sense? Yes, of course, of course. But you are also have the option to to use a, a pair of v, v8. Uh, you see what I mean? Uh, kernel based. Or, uh, yeah, yeah, you can do. Yes, you can literally do whatever you you feel like doing. Um, that's why in one of the slides I was pointing to our examples. Um, uh, repo where actually there are only one of the examples is based on VPP. Uh, everything else is mm. pure, uh, like even more simpler. Okay, not one, two, two of the examples. Sorry, mm. are based on. VPP, but uh, others are more or less uh, simpler, um, uh, simple examples. But they are not straightly bound to the VPP. Now, the okay. uh, reference to VPP was because we already have the ACL filtering there. We have the cross connects as a concept out of the box. That's the point. But if you yeah. introduce these concepts yourself and you implement them on some other um, platform like DPDK, I mean, then then there's really no no problem with that. Yeah, uh, I know all, uh, all of that, and uh, uh -huh. that's, what, that's what I'm trying to explain afterward. But uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's a good. It's really confusing when you see uh, when you see uh, your example. Uh, yeah. between, uh, there is a lot of confusion between the data pass, which is running the VPP, and VPP is running also in the pod. Uh, so yeah. mm -hmm. okay, that, that, that's a really good point. Did they, was, was there something else particularly they had in mind for writing? Um, Network service endpoints and does the data path? Pardon? Excuse me? Did, was there some other uh, thing to use in the data path for the network service endpoints that your colleagues had in mind? Uh, not really, but uh, it was on, only uh, the fact that uh, uh, 
the, the, the told me, yes, it's a, it's a VPP based project. So you have to run VPP in the database. You have to run VPP in your, in your uh, endpoint. So we, 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 we probably need to be clear about that because you don't even have to use VPP for the data plane. Uh, you know, someone oh. else in a data plane that, that is not VPP based if they wanted to. The, the API is yeah. based. I I'm, think that, that we should start calling this data plane because I think that this is something that, that actually creates the confusion because in, in our glossary, we moved away from this. So the data plane is essentially the chain of CNFs that turn on top. So we call this kind of forwarding elements or forwarding plane or something along those lines. Yeah, um, part, of, part of something that I'm doing to, uh, that will help in this space is uh, I'm I'm having a conversation with the tungsten fabric people in a in their main call next week, and so we're going to discuss two areas. One of them is uh, the network services, as I described, which I think is probably going to be the highest value area for them, uh, but also but the potential of getting them as a uh, as a data plane as well, and getting them to implement the data plane API. And I think if we if they were to implement the data plane API, they'll give us really good feedback on where on where the API is lacking, so we can get something that's a, that's a, not that's we don't just say is generic, but is provably generic, and simultaneously that uh, they can they can give us with uh, with addition, they can give additional assistance in uh, in advice on how well it integrates. So so hopefully, if they agree and and decide to go down that path, and then. Uh, we'll have something more than just VPP to talk about in some of these uh, in some of these conversations. Uh, and uh, in parallel, we we are also looking. Um, even we started at the conference, uh, looking at um, how we can implement a very simple kernel based. And I, actually, I found an issue today, just just for reference, just to have it there. Uh, just a simple Linux kernel based uh, forwarding. Uh, just to yeah, have something as a baseline that says this is what you can do. And if you want advanced features, use some of the other guys. Um, so Frederick, uh, on the tungsten fabric uh, integration, uh, does it mean that uh, this would be with the V router of uh, Juniper or uh, uh, is it going to be like uh, tungsten fabric natively managing or talking with the NSM via gRPC? Well, there'll definitely be a gRPC component. Uh, I don't know what that'll look like just yet because it depends on on what they want to do and what they want to showcase. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it sounds to me that they were interested in doing a something that was tungsten fabric related as the as a Kubernetes uh, as a data plane that that sits within the Kubernetes part. Okay. Uh, I. I'm also going to ask them to look at something that is similar to to the ODL path because mm -hmm. one of one of our goals is to be able to integrate multiple multiple groups and there's there's areas where ODL absolutely shines especially with the netconf support and uh, there's other areas where tungsten fabric really shines that are okay. complementary. So I'm, what I want to do is I want to try to make sure that we find what areas are complementary to uh, to NSM and and the community so that we can get uh, good alignment. And in the long run, sure, I mean there'll be some healthy competition in certain areas. Right. But we want to find that that early alignment in for for the areas where they don't cover each other. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because they also have the V router component, which is the data plane part. Uh, so that would be interesting wherein we can add, if they are in, looking to integrate with vRouter, we can add one other data plane to the list of NSM supported data planes. Yeah, and I'm gonna have a talk with one of their, with one of the uh, people from Juniper this week and we're gonna, he's gonna give me a better understanding because I really don't understand tungsten fabric at this okay. point as to like what sure. it really does. Cool. Uh, and but once uh, once he I have that conversation with him, then I'll uh, then I'll be in a call with him next week to try sure. to to work out that alignment. Uh, if, if you're interested in in helping a bit with that as well, like I definitely would appreciate some some feedback. Uh, 
Sure, definitely. Yeah, in fact, I think someone from Juniper had pinged me. I'll probably connect back with them and then uh, point you to the discussion. What are you planning to have? Sure. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. Um, okay. Um, something else uh, from the KubeCon EU wrap up? Um, let's see. I don't have any other things on the e, on the KubeCon EU other than uh, slides and videos should uh, should be on the events page um, and uh, videos are are starting to show up in the actual events themselves and so I was notified that they've already started to put content up uh, I have not checked to see if our so content is ev everything is there I, we have posted them to to the NSM channel the video the two videos are there I mean for NSM. We're so, even up on the events page. Yeah. So yeah. Fantastic. The videos are already up there. You can go watch them. They're 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 picking up views. <clears throat> and you know, just generally speaking, the interest at KubeCon EU is strong. Um a lot we of We ran out of stickers. We had a thousand stickers. Yeah, we ran out of stickers pretty much on the first day. Um so yes, the lesson of that, lesson learned, bring more stickers, lots more stickers. I managed to save a couple for China, so I'll have something to bring there. <laughs> ah, you've been hoarding them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How long does it take to make stickers, by the way? Uh, I ordered them. <coughs> uh, it takes about four days to make stickers. Um, so I, I ordered them like Sunday weekend before you know, the, the week before, it's the Sunday of the week before KubeCon. I had them by a Wednesday, um, so it does not take long. Okay, so, and, and how much do they end up costing you as well? I mean, I imagine they're not that expensive. No, they're not. It's like 140 bucks for 500, I think, and they get cheaper when you order more, so. Okay, cool. Okay, so um, let's move down the agenda then. Uh, so we have social media community team uh, updates. I have copied only the link to the account because I thought that we might want to have some updates here. I don't know who is here from the Vogue guys. Yeah. guys. I'm, I'm not seeing Lucina on, mm -hmm. um, so uh, they're probably in the CNCF, uh, yeah. uh, the main C or the main CNCF call, which occurs every other week. So, so we lose them every other week. Yep, the talk call happens. Yeah. So, but we are we are chugging right along in terms of our followers. We're up to two twenty one now, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we've got a lot of tweeting happening, and there's a lot of things being retweeted, and mm -hmm. you know, we're all it's going really well. Yeah, let's let's make okay. sure we, we mark down two twenty one. Then I'll, I'll add that to um, to the current followers. That way we can track over track over time as well. Yep. So, uh, Fred, do we do you have any updates for the? I'm clicking here on the network service mesh release notes. I guess nothing really changed since last week. Yeah, I did not work on it last week, uh, but I'm. Yeah, in, in terms of in terms of the release notes, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll give it a pass today, and then we can do another. Uh, we can run it uh, again past Jeffrey tomorrow, since he wasn't, since Jeffrey was uh, not at the last uh, call. I, I want to get his input on on how the release notes are looking. Um, and with uh, with that, once once we're happy with where they are, and then we can we can set it to the side until we're ready to do the actual release and then give it one more pass for any last minute things that change. Um, okay, I see here something about our table limits that probably needs to be set as a limitation there. Um, and we have the CI stabilization. Right. What are your observations here? <laughs> we have, I guess we have uh, all the relevant people on the call, so we can talk a lot uh, about this. <laughs> so, I mean, it seems like things are getting getting better. 
Um, but but it's still not quite stable. I haven't been following as well the last week. Dude, does anyone else have any sort of observations as to where we stand? I have mine, but I will let Andre. Uh, yeah, share. we still uh, have some of the tests failing sometimes. Uh, mostly it's related to EPN based tests. We have added a few fixes. And probably, as uh, some of the guys found, it could be related to some issues, it still exists. But it's not so critical, actually, as before. S so from my point of view, it's a much, much, much better situation than, I mean, at some point uh, we had a lot of uh, problems with the public code, specifically leaking resources, et cetera, et cetera. So I would say that the CI in general is in much better shape. And then the tests themselves also are behaving not that bad. So I am running kind of a parallel CI, just on a circle CI for my examples repo. Okay, my, it's not mine, it's there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> work, so. yeah. So, so yeah, uh, so there my observation is that things are behaving pretty stable. I mean, um, examples are just the user of the core components, like the admission controller, network service manager, and the forwarding plane. I would really like to rename some pods there. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, if you just want to, to deploy it on a plane cluster and deploy some of the examples on top, it works more or less stable. Now, there is some uh, strange issue where the ordering of uh, the deployment matters, but okay, I will try to figure out the uh, uh, integration test and uh, send it for more investigation. But I mean, I, I'm more more or less, uh, I can say that I'm happy with whatever I see from the core components. Uh, we have just integrated the latest uh, release of DPP, which was released yesterday, uh, 2.1.1, which should help us have a better um, IPv6 support amongst other things. So I think that we are moving into the right uh, direction. We have outlined, actually, Andre have outlined uh, a number of issues that uh, he thinks um, uh, we need to tackle before we do the branching. But I think that we have very good chances to do the branch for the release this week. And there's no escape this time, I think. That would be awesome. That would be mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can quickly check the uh, backlog if we don't have anything to say more about the CI. I really think that uh, the CI is, is moving in that, the right direction and uh, Andre is also putting some thoughts into improving it. So, uh, But this, this would definitely be something after the, 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 the branch uh, happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, it will be related only for uh, integration testing. Yeah. Yeah, as much as I'm in favor of what Andre was doing, not before the branch pull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Swapping your uh, entire CI system just before release, not a good move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so maybe we need some 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 iterations here on the on the backlog and see what's critical for us and what's not. Uh, what's okay? What can be actually left? Uh, for the next uh, uh, release. Um, I think that we have a lot of the things done now. I mean, in the done state, there's a lot. Uh, we have some things in flight, which are not that much, mostly by, from the things that he, we have outlined uh, already in the channel. Uh, and uh, here on the left, I think that we just need to go again one by one and uh, figure out what's still a thing and what's not, because I think that some of the things are yep. more or less uh, figured out already. Yeah. If, someone, if someone wants to bring something critical, uh, I guess Matt is one of the guys with the opinions here uh, on this topic. Uh, please, uh, please bring it forward now because we'll try to close as much as possible this week and branch. Yep. Matt? Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, there is just uh, some kind of strange behavior for about the, the healing processes. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, I have reported uh, some uh, some bugs on, about it. Mm -hmm. Essentially, uh, the monitoring reports. In fact, I, I saw this kind of behavior because the monitoring doesn't uh, doesn't works uh, doesn't work well. So uh, I see they have been tagged this kind of bug by a head. So uh, the 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 fix is in progress. I think. Uh, I, I do try and roll through and, and tag things appropriately as the stuff we need to get fixed for version 0 0.1 um, and, you know, and and things that are bugs and that kind of stuff. Which would be this one? Mm, no, no, it's... Um, ah, okay. Mm, let me just take the number. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, my my at least feeling here is that for this first release we just need if you can just say okay if you deploy this on a clean cluster run whatever workload you want to run and then if you want to run it again you have to clean up everything and not mm -hmm. rely on things getting up and down redeploying things and stuff i mean it's the very first release it's alpha well, it's whatever so it depends on what you mean by clean up everything uh frankly um okay you shouldn't you 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 shouldn't have to tear down the nsm infrastructure every time because then you can't have multiple workloads and multiple network service endpoints and things going successfully, right? So it has to at least be the case that you can leave the infrastructure running in the long term and deploy and redeploy various things on top of it and still have stuff work. Well, we, we, we all know that there are, there are things like corner cases where if I deploy something and then while deleting it, I deploy the other thing and there's this intermediate state where things get wrong and you know all these kinds of strange things happening because to be frank in our ci we clean up the environment every time i mean after each test so maybe something to think through is some, you know after the release is some testing that's a little bit less of clean up the infrastructure every time mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. because we, we should be able to keep the infrastructure up and deploy these things and have stuff work and not be dangling things. So that may be something to look at after the release in terms of the, the integration testing. It, it may be something you might want to think about, Andre, as you, I know you're thinking deep thoughts about integration testing going forward, um, because we, we do need to make sure we function properly um, with the infrastructure staying continuously up and, and workloads coming and going. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. with, with our first release, I think it's a more about proof of concept people that can deploy and see how this thing works in practice. But uh, I, at least I don't expect that this should work in you know, all the, you know, getting up down things and moving around and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we are, I think we are not verifying this at least. Uh, yeah. Okay. Actually, yeah, just to, to, to specify the, the issue I was mentioning, it's a one, one, two, three. I saw this, I saw it. I managed to find a scenario which mm -hmm. uh, leads to uh, an SM, uh, SM manager uh, reboot. So that's yeah, I, I think this is actually being worked on um, because, yeah, the, the inconsistency you described here is, is definitely a bug and definitely needs to be fixed. So, mm -hmm. okay. Cool. Um... Okay, so. Is that all on the um, stabilization, or should we move on to the Andromeda release? Uh, that was the... That was the Andromeda release. <laughs> yeah, back Sorry, I, yeah. I, got, uh, I got distracted on something. Uh, um, I don't know if Rank is on the call, because this is just copied from the last time. I don't know if it's still a thing. Maybe we should just delete it if Rank is not here to discuss. Or maybe Prem, do you have any... No, I don't have updates on this. Uh, I think I can check with him. Uh, I think we started this topic uh, to present about the first responder use case and activities around it, but uh, there is as such uh, no progress uh, beyond this discussion. Okay. Okay, we can uh, jump straight into uh, the roadmap discussion then. Mm -hmm. 
So, so this is something that I was, I just wanted to, to, to bring up. I don't think that this is something that we should fix. It's just more like, let's talk a little bit like open um, and like in a common uh, call uh, about the things that we envision next. So of course, I have put the first couple of items here, so I can start if, uh, if you let me. Uh, so of course, the release is the first thing which, which we're actively working there. Then there is this story of the example. So uh, I try to keep them in a separate repo. There's been discussions about re re renaming things in the main repo. So I would, at least from my point of view, I would like to, to have the confirmation of the community that we would like to keep these things separate, maintained in a separate repo, tested continuously, at least the way that I'm doing now. So I don't know, Ed, Fred, uh, Andre, at least from the, from the main I, I, mm -hmm. I generally tend to be in favor of, of moving the examples out of the main repo to a separate repo. That said, I, I, I do realize there's sometimes hiccups in that process, so I, I do want to make sure we do it with care. But mm -hmm. overall, I would love a world where, you know, we've got the infra in one repo and we've got the examples in another. And, and so, you know, when we're doing the CI, we're not having to rebuild the examples every time, even though they haven't really changed. So. Um, okay. Any other opinions here? So uh, the other thing that we have um, that we have discussed at KubeCon uh, with uh, Watson and some of the other guys, I think with uh, Taylor before, is about the CNCF test-based uh, enablement. This is something that is pending for for a while, and uh, I am personally, um, I mean, I would like to get involved, and we have spoke with uh, Watson a lot about what are the things there and the plans. Um, I, yeah, so I, the, mm -hmm. the thing that we're waiting for at the moment was um, there was, I forget the name of the guy from Intel, I think it was like Michael Henderson or Peterson or something similar to that, um, is working on getting uh, VPP networking with OpenStack uh, doing its thing. And they were having some connectivity issues between um, uh, between node-to-node -node communication uh, between OpenStack nodes. So once he had that working, um, then... That's not NSM, I mean, uh, this is something no, that someone else is getting. It's, 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 not, it's not NSM itself, but part I believe part of what they wanted to do, well, there, there were two parts. There were the CNCF CI, and then after that, and there was a CNCF test bed. Um, and so I think that the CNCF CI was the first thing that they wanted to, to tackle before they start to even consider no, I, control test bed. Correct me if I think we got Watson here. Correct me if I'm wrong, Watson, but I, I think that's completely orthogonal. Uh, the guy who's working on the open stuff, stuff Robert Starmer, um, is off doing his thing there. And so I don't think that really relates in any direct way to us in NSM working in, in the CNCF test bed. Is that correct? Okay, sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, you're correct. It's totally different. Robert's stuff is totally different. And if we were waiting for OpenStack, it would, it would, it would really hold us up. We'd like to have- We'd be waiting the, forever. Um. Yeah, <laughs> we, we would really like to have this, the uh, Kubernetes side with the networking, uh, network service mess going. Yeah, and, and so I, I know that there, there have been some desire expressed last week in conversations that we had to just have somebody sit down with you guys, that, that Denver in particular, and I think you also want to maybe we're interested in actually doing the little bit of coding necessary for the NSCs that you need and, and more having a partner to help you through rather than having someone go do it for you. Is, did I, did I get that correctly? Uh, yeah. And then I also, like I said, uh, we were like Nikolai said, talking with him about how the structure could be and he offered to, to help. So um, that would be probably the best if he was also uh, yeah. working on it. That would be fantastic. Um, you know, in my mind, it, it, the, the first turn of the crank is actually pretty, pretty damn simple, which is you just need to write a very simple network service endpoint, um, you know, that you're going to use everywhere, which has just got um, something that advertises a service and consumes the same service because the basic topology you guys have is a loop with your vSwitch and use that mm -hmm. NSC for everything, including the vSwitch. And then... Mm -hmm or any auxiliary config that you need that's not currently being handled by network service mesh with the connecting of the interfaces, 
just push that directly. Uh, so for example, like the DPDK stuff to get you to and from uh, the NIC at this particular moment, just push that directly. Um, and that way you get a very simple first step on the whole thing. Yeah. So. Mm, that's probably slightly different than what I was thinking, but okay. I mean, I'll make sure to, 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 to let the community know once, once we were able to sit together with Watson and figure out. Yeah. What were you thinking? Uh, I was actually thinking to take whatever we call the firewall now and actually enhance it to be completely config configurable to expose as much as possible from the uh, VPP agent capabilities like uh, routing, the cross connect, so something that you can essentially configure through a config map. So this is something that we call to it Watson, something like the universal uh, yeah. CNF. Uh, like you can you can do routing or you can actually i asked the guys there from the vp agent they were kind to add the uh aco based forwarding so you can do a lot of things there based on that right this is, this is fine the reason i'm laughing is that we're building we're building a router we're building a, a router and switch um, <laughs> so yeah i mean that that's also true i i have been thinking more from the direction of things something relatively unambitious that you know, that Denver and those guys could do themselves. Um, but but you, if you're going to go actually help them, I'll, I'll leave it in your able hands because your, your approach sounds fine as well. Um, you know, because I think at the end of the day, however we get there from the point of view of code, the fundamental thing we need right now, because it's the functionality we're, that they're currently using, is something where, you know, basically the vSwitch comes up, requests a connection. The first thing it hits, it gets plugged into the first CNF um, as just a routable interface. Um, because there are going to be some routes and so forth. And we can ramp up and ramp down and, and slice and dice the steps we take to get between A and B. Um, but, but fundamentally, I think that's where they're starting. Okay. So you're more or less aligned. Maybe the approach would be a little bit different, but yeah. But yeah, but result, both, I guess. Approach, both approaches are perfectly valid. I think more than anything, mm -hmm. they're just manifestations mm -hmm. of our personalities. So I, I'm perfectly fine with what you were talking about there. Mm -hmm. And uh, to... to uh, um, I guess to, to review also with what Dan was saying in the uh, user group, the telco user group where he, he had uh, or volunteered Lucina for saying what all is deployed out of band. Well, the V switch and a bunch of other things in the um, tests that are deployed out of band, the more that we're using the network service mesh, the more it's deployed in the cloud native way. Yeah. And we can, mm -hmm. So we can talk about that in the mm -hmm. with yep. Dan and everything. So yeah, it'd be fantastic to get to the point where you say, "So, what about networking? Networking is installed out of band." No, networking is a network service that is installed in cloud native fashion. Right. Right. Yep. Yep. Um, and, and the thing is, I, I think we can progressively chip away at that. Um, you know, because for example, things like. The uh, SR the SRO VVF thing is probably going to little, be a little further out for network service mesh um, as a feature, um, but we can you know we can do other we can do some out of band work and not even terribly much out of band work with that until we get there and still use network service mesh for plumbing the connections between. Yeah, something. Um... So is Lucina going to come up with a, a list of uh, things that are not, uh, that, or things that are currently out of band? Uh, yeah. She's going to, well, they probably would just ask Taylor or go Denver or go, can come up with some things as well and um, put it together in a document. Yeah, that, that would be good because then we can take a look at what, what we can put in band and uh, it will also be good for two point others added for things that are not networking related as well. So I, I think this is really good. Uh, okay, going further down the list. Um, we have the measure integration deployment uh, components. I know that Prem has something yeah. to say there. Sure, yeah, sure Nikolai. Uh, so uh, measure uh, as a project is essentially uh, meant to do a bit of benchmarking around service meshes. Um, so uh, what a uh, bunch of us are doing is trying to get network service mesh and uh, the 
idea here is uh, how do we benchmark because in case of service mesh they would essentially pump traffic via the uh, um, uh, ingress controller and then try to see how it performs uh, what we are thinking was probably uh, develop a, a network a service mesh client and then take one um, uh, example uh, uh, cnf uh, and then uh, try to do a bit of benchmarking around it um, so one thing what i'm doing is i'm Uh, putting together a, a document i wanted to validate with uh, the measurement team just to understand uh, the uh, various components that can be leveraged and then once that is done i'll probably try to present it next week um, on what is the intent and then uh, get community feedback to see how we can leverage the measurement platform yeah we should eventually get uh, lee calcote to give a short talk over here as well to, dis- to describe was, the uh... he was here I don't know if you if it was him or someone else from their project but we had some... Girish was there actually. Ah okay. Yeah. Yeah, Girish is so okay. Yeah. Girish actually uh Frederick Girish gave a presentation I think at the uh, sort of high level. You can probably ask him to give a detail. I can check with him and then. Yeah. yeah, well I think we had, we had someone who came and spoke about uh well, we had someone to see when was it? It was uh, late April uh about a month ago. um so perhaps uh i was thinking more like in to, to work out like the details uh mm-hmm. like if if this is a path that we really want to go that we really want to go down then being able to get the the details on exactly mm-hmm. what were what are we like what do we need to provide them what do they what do they want to to provide us and try to work out that integration right um, yeah Um, so uh, i can probably work on the first cut um, and then present it here um, so we also have an intern working on uh, just to see how mm-hmm. we, if we can get this done yeah perfect um so uh, the next thing that i have put here in the list is this uh, service mesh interface which was uh, the new the new service mesh uh, <laughs> hype that <laughs> that uh, was announced at kubecon now at first glance it actually seems a little bit far from what we are doing but on the other side um, if you remember this slide that i wanted to point out from the tug kickoff where actually we are part of a part of a landscape so this is again in line with what i think that we should try to do um so i would like i mean and, and on our side we are going to dedicate some resource actually ivana here uh she is going to work uh, to try to figure out what this spec is about how this aligns with us not really aligned today can we apply to change some things there uh can we can we try to figure out some adapters and in general how this thing is going and again this is all about being part of the wider landscape and try to to be i mean if these are specs that are going on uh maybe maybe we could become part of these specs they have the traffic uh, spec which uh, which specifies the type of traffic etc cetera, etc cetera. maybe we can contribute something there being service mesh in the end again <clears throat> yeah so so the thing with them is they're very very uh, http specific yeah so, yeah yeah that's true um, when that's it, true. so if you look at the access control it's about like how do you it actually will list out http endpoints and like how do you control those or you look um they call them http uh, route groups um if you look at like the traffic mm-hmm. the traffic mm-hmm. uh, specs and splits uh, they're they're effectively the same so i yeah. think so i think as smi as it is right now is is not very i'm not going to say it's not interesting because it definitely is but it's it's something that plays at a level that's way higher than uh than we play at however mm-hmm. uh we i think we have a couple options so one option would be to try to work out how to enable these type of things so if someone says something like uh they want to do a split or something uh we we could we could help with some of those uh with some of those splits if they mm-hmm. if they want especially when you start looking at things like how do you do federated uh clustering you know because the, that uh where if you're trying to access something and you want to say that this thing could be split across multiple clusters uh we we could provide help with that 
Another thing as well is we could also contribute to the spec and push things that are that are lower level into it. Exactly, as well. exactly, exactly. And, I com completely I, agree with you. I yeah. Yeah, and I I feel more comfortable with that particular path because I think trying to to shoehorn ourselves into the HTTP space is not going to go well. No, no. I, I have a basic rule that applies here. It's the law of no unnatural acts, which is to say, um, I'm, I'm I think it's a really good idea for us to engage, but I think what what Nikolai and, and Frederick are saying, which is let's not try and commit any unnatural acts by first forcing ourselves into the HTTP part of the spec, is probably no. dead. <clears throat> so. Okay. Uh, then uh, we have the kernel forwarding plane, which we already spoke, and then uh, I guess that uh, this was it, adding these things, security, yeah, DNS. We've we got to go through and do security, DNS, interdomain. Uh, Andre had a really smart idea for resiliency v2, mm -hmm. uh, which um, you guys have all heard of Chaos Monkey, where you sort of randomly kill an element of the system. Uh, with, with Andre's idea for resiliency v2, we should be able to do Chaos Gorilla, where we kill everything in the in the where we basically update up restart the entire service mesh all at once, and everything still works. Um, and then the other one we talked about at KubeCon was dynamic rewiring, particularly the packet capture example. And then we also have the hardware Nix slash SRIOV stuff also that we will eventually need to do for the NFE use cases. For the um, for the chaos monkey, we should also introduce its uh, simian cousins, such as like latency monkey or our others, into the system over time as we start to build uh, yep. these type of features in. Yep, yep, sounds good. Um, I got a draft that I've uh, been putting together for the DNS one, so I'll, I'll try to get that out as soon as possible, uh, so we can start doing some discussions on that. And we, 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 have, uh, we have an initial draft running loose for interdomain. Probably needs a little bit more love, but it's out there. There's also an initial draft for the hardware Nix and SRO V stuff. Um, you know, resiliency V2. Um, I don't know, Andre, if you've got anything you've written like a spec for that. Do you want to do that? Did we lose Andre? <laughs> Bad. Did you ask me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was your idea. Uh, ah, okay, for Gorilla, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, so uh, general idea is uh, to have uh, init container to request initial NSE, pass uh, a connection to the monitoring container as a sidecar. So we will be able to do full recover from this sidecar of the services. And the same could be achieved using VSDK uh, with monitoring of an SMD. Uh, one question is for our security and the authority uh, when we do uh, restarting all the services, except yep. uh, clients and except NSEs. But yep. in general, all looks very pos uh, possible and very interesting. Okay, so I think you've just politely said, please finish the security spec so you can do the resiliency spec, which is totally valid. <laughs> uh, so that, that, that's a totally fair complaint. Um, yeah, and the, the, among other things, the interdomain spec probably should be updated to, um, should probably be updated to include floating domains. Um, they're super cool. Yeah. So, but yeah, the, the packet capture example, by the way, for dynamic rewiring, this was one that we actually got as a suggestion talking to people um, <clears throat> at the conference, which is if we can do dynamic rewiring, we could wire in something like a web shark packet capture box um, dynamically into the chain of a particular pod. So let's say you've got a pod that's got some weird things going on, you can't tell what's happening. You could dynamically wire a packet capture box, say before the firewall pod um, or whatever. Um, and using WebShark, you could do a packet capture specifically for that pod along that network service, um, which that should be like candy for developers um, because now you can really get deep introspection to what's happening on the wire. Cool. 
So but this is a feature that is provided by uh, um, by Skydive, by the way. But uh, <laughs> uh, just it, it, when you mean dynamic wiring, uh, you mean that uh, also you 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 should be able to uh, on the fly uh, move um, uh, cross connect from one pod to another. Or? Yeah, so if you picture it this way, if you have a pod that's got a connection between the, the pod and the, you know, from the workload to a firewall to a VPN gateway, the, the idea behind dynamic rewiring would be to allow you to selectively, for a particular pod, wire a packet capture box before the firewall and the VPN gateway so that you could actually capture and see what's going on. Okay. But, uh, okay. But it has nothing to do with uh, uh, the capabilities to, uh, uh, if a pod is uh, is uh, too, uh, there are too many connections on the pod, uh, try to, to schedule, uh, to try, try to rewire some kind of cross connect to another pod dynamically. Ah, so you mean basically load shedding. So like if yes. I'm a pod and I'm overwhelmed and I need to tell somebody, hey, this, this is not working for me. I've got too many connections. Could you possibly? Mm -hmm. That's another interesting one to throw into the mix to think about. Um, I would throw that into the same general category as auto healing, um, which is to say with, with auto healing, you're, you're, you're basically saying, look, okay, I, I no longer have the connection I need to the thing I'm talking to. And so I've got to go find something else to do. Um, I think it, you, what you've described is not quite the same as auto healing but it's in the same flavor and that it's not something the user asked for. It's, it's a dynamic attribute of the system. What I was thinking about with dynamic rewiring was the user makes a legitimately different policy choice about how they want the wiring to look. Um, and that we go ahead and take existing workloads and rewire them in response to that. So, okay. yeah, with, um, with that form of, uh, of load shedding and so on, there's, there's a couple tools that we can pull from current uh, application service meshes, uh, especially you look at the net, some of the stuff that Netflix uh, spoke about, things like uh, short circuiting, um, we, we can make use of. Yeah. But uh, anyways, with that, we're four minutes over the, uh, the agenda. So I uh, strongly recommend that we add these to the, uh, to the next week's agenda because they're definitely important topics. Yeah, yeah. That's um, is there when good? Mm -hmm. Is there any last minute announcements, or, or should we should we close it up? Let's close. Yep, I think we're okay. good. Okay. Well, right. thank you everyone for your time, and we thank will you see guys. you all again next week at the same time. Yeah. Bye bye. Tomorrow, some of you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See some of you tomorrow. <laughs>